in January of 2023, Sheriff Fryhoff and I stood in this room to announce that we had filed murder charges against Rothery Foster for the intentional, deliberate, and willful killing of Jose Velasquez. Mr. Velasquez and Mr. Foster knew each other as fellow plumbers. We alleged in that criminal document that the murder was done in the commission of a robbery and for financial gain. Specifically, with respect to the Velasquez case, we anticipate the evidence will show that the defendant violently and forcibly took ATM passwords and checks from Velasquez and used those financial instruments for gas, cash, clothing, and food. These alleged fraudulent activities combined with cell phone records and forensic evidence found in Velasquez's van led to Foster's arrest and prosecution for first degree murder using a firearm, identity theft, forgery, and grand theft, as well as other criminal charges. In the course of preparing the Velasquez case for trial, Senior Prosecutor Amber Lee and DA Investigator Michael McManama discovered new crimes and additional victims. After subpoenaing bank records from the defendant's bank, Deputy District Attorney Lee and Investigator McManama saw a number of suspicious, troubling, and alarming transactions. In a January 2022 bank account, the DA team noticed several online mobile transactions from a Bill Levy into the defendant's bank account. They also noticed a check for several thousand dollars drawn on Mr. Levy's account deposited into the defendant's bank account. After identifying as a potential victim, who was Bill Levy? And what connection, if any, did he have to Rothery Foster? They learned that Bill Levy had passed away on January the 10th 2022 of natural causes. This was alarming and disturbing to Prosecutor Lee and Investigator McManama because the suspected fraudulent transactions that they saw initiated the day after on January the 11th, 2022. It also disturbed and alarmed the district attorney team because they saw a troubling and similar pattern, the potential for murder for financial gain. In the course of investigating Bill Levy, they also learned that he had been visited multiple times by Mr. Foster. Mr. Foster, it was learned worked for a large plumbing company who had dispatched to the Granada Hills townhouse on several occasions, Mr. Foster, to perform plumbing related work on behalf of Mr. Levy. Here to talk about what Levy's neighbor in an adjacent townhouse learned on January the 10th, 2022, and the evolving criminal investigation is Sheriff James Fryhoff. Thank you, Eric. Bill Levy was a resident of the community of Granada Hills within the city of Los Angeles. In the afternoon on January 10th, 2022, officers from the Los Angeles Police Department responded to Mr. Levy's residence when a neighbor called requesting a, check, a welfare check. 
After recognizing that Mr. Levy had not been carrying out his morning routine, such as collecting his newspaper and bringing in his trash. LAPD officers entered the residence and found Mr. Levy deceased in his bed. Although Mr. Levy's death was unexpected, officers did not have any information or evidence at the time to suggest he fell victim to foul play. Mr. Levy was 72 years of age at the time of his death. Per his neighbor's statements, Mr. Levy was a quiet but nice man who lived a regimented lifestyle and kept a rigid schedule about his daily routines. We were notified by the Ventura County District Attorney's Office regarding suspicious financial activity that had been discovered and how it coincided with Mr. Levy's death. Believing Mr. Levy's death might have resulted, been the result of foul play, investigators from the Ventura County Sheriff's Office, Major Crimes Bureau, the Ventura County District Attorney's Office Bureau of Investigation, the Los Angeles Police Department, and the Los Angeles County Medical Examiner's Office, Mr. Levy's body was exhumed at Eden Memorial to conduct an autopsy. The Los Angeles County Medical Examiner's Office performed the autopsy and the results showed that Mr. Levy's death, cause of death was the effects of fentanyl and they ruled Mr. Levy's manner of death as a homicide. Ventura County Sheriff's Major Crimes investigators obtained further evidence linking Foster to Mr. Levy's murder. Among those items of evidence include cell phone records. On May 20th, 2024, investigators from the Major Crimes Office of Ventura County arrested Foster for Levy's murder, and Foster was supplementally booked on another charge of murder as a result. In light of the investigation, the Ventura County District Attorney's Office has added a number of criminal felony charges to the existing complaint. Specifically, as it stands today, 33 felony charges and over 100 special allegations. Murder in the first degree. Murder in the commission of a burglary. The multiple murder special allegation. Forgery. Identity theft. Grand theft. The intentional and deliberate administration of a poison. We have also identified separate crimes and additional victims beyond Mr. Velasquez and Mr. Levy. Specifically, we were able to locate in January of 2021 bank records belonging to a Russell Parsons also a San Fernando Valley resident, and also an individual who had received plumbing services from Mr. Foster. We noticed in a subpoena of bank records that Mr. Parsons had checks drawn on his account deposited in Foster's bank. <coughs> we also, in the course of the investigation, learned that Mr. Foster was tied to a July 4th, 2022 robbery of a Fillmore convenience store. We anticipate the evidence will show that in the robbery of the convenience store, Mr. Foster entered in the early morning hours. He was armed, he bound the employees, and he took money. We anticipate the evidence will show that due to license plate information, as well as cell phone data, that Mr. Foster is the suspect in those alleged crimes. These revised, pardon me, these crimes are in the revised charging document and I owe a debt of gratitude to those who are with us today at this press conference. Senior Prosecutor Amber Lee, DA Investigator Michael McManama, Chief of our Bureau, Scott Whitney, and from the Sheriff's team, Sheriff James Fryhoff. We also have Jim Goosen, also a DA investigator, Senior Detective Cruz from the Ventura County Sheriff's Department, as well as Senior Detective 
Hernandez. And I also want to thank my partner in law enforcement, Sheriff James Fryhoff. I want to conclude with just a few words about Bill Levy. Who was he? Bill Levy grew up in the city of Westchester in Los Angeles County, a graduate of Westchester High School. He was one of 10 siblings. I had the opportunity to speak to his cousin yesterday, his next of kin, who informed me that he had lived alone and he had been a bookkeeper for a furniture and property management company, as well as a former postal employee. She shared with me at the end of our conversation that Mr. Levy donated his entire estate to the City of Hope, the American Heart Association, Children's Hospital, and Delta Animal Rescue. We would now be happy to answer any questions. Gentlemen, is there any reason to believe that as far as the homicides are concerned, there could be more victims out there? We don't know of any additional victims at this point, but the investigation, Sid, is ongoing. Could, could we ask Amber Lee just about uh, why they went so far into the record, sir? Because it's pretty amazing that they found that information. Yeah. Step up. Yeah. Right. We looked into the records because there were ATM cards that were associated with the bank that was related to Velasquez's fraud. And when we saw those cards with, when he had no known uh, bank accounts, it became suspicious and we wanted to look into those accounts to see if there was any intermingling of funds, if there was any potential um, arguments that could be made. And that's why we wanted to look into those particular records to make sure that there was no legitimate or lawful purpose that he was using Mr. Velasquez's cards. And we found that additional fraud when we looked into those records. Was it like instant or did, did it take a while to kind of put the pieces together? It took a while to put the pieces together. It stood out just given the nature and the frequency that, that, that Mr. Levy's name appeared in those records. Um, so it was suspicious, but it wasn't something that was immediately fraud that took additional uh, work and aid from the uh, Bureau of Investigations. Ms. Lee, in layman's terms, did he pretty much set it up where he kind of made your job easier to follow him because the financial fraud, he left the trail to let you know what was going on? We certainly had evidence of financial fraud in the bank records, um, and that fraud named the additional victims by name, and that is what led us to those victims. I, I have one. Um, Mr. William Levy's death originally, you know, being described as natural causes, I guess, I don't know, for lack of a better, like, how, how did that happen? You know, if it was a fentanyl poisoning, why was it not identified as an overdose in the first place, whether it was poisoning or whatever? Like, you know, how did, did that one kind of slip through the cracks? What initially happened was the medical examiner of LA County, Tony, was contacted and the medical examiner had conversations with the primary care physician of Mr. Levy. Uh, there were conversations about the state of his health and it was determined on the basis of those conversations that an autopsy was not needed, uh, that most likely the cause of death was of natural uh, causes. Uh, the fentanyl was only learned through the exhumation of the body at Eden Memorial, um, but initially no autopsy was performed. It was declared a death of natural causes, and uh, we only learned subsequently through the search warrant. So there's cardiac arrest. 72-year-old man was the original sort of assumption, I guess? Sure, I can share with you right now that the initial, if you just bear with me for a moment. Hypertension and uh, cardiopulmonary arrest. I have one more question. Um, I can't remember where I read this, some other news report from a while back on his, his earlier murder arrest. 
that he did 16 years, I think, for a manslaughter conviction in the early 2000s. Is that true? It is true. He was convicted as a juvenile and tried in adult court for a mon manslaughter case, received 16 years of incarceration, and in addition to the 16 years, received five years for a total of 21 on an assault with a deadly weapon causing great bodily injury. Do you know if he, if he served 21 years or how much of that he was? I don't know specifically how much of the 21 he served, but that was the sentence that was pronounced. And he's been in custody already for other charges. He was arrested in August of uh, last year, and he has been in custody since. Right, we'll take one more question. Anybody has one more? Can you talk about how, just how unusual this is? I mean, this is a pretty unusual kind of case. Lance, Sheriff Fryoff and I have been in law enforcement for nearly 15 years, 50 years collectively. Um, I can't think of a case wherein an individual was accused of intentionally administering fentanyl, causing their death, who had already been arrested uh, on other murder charges, and who also committed additional financial crimes as well as robberies. Uh, this is, in my opinion, almost unprecedented. So like identity theft and financial fraud are, are, I think, fairly common crimes, but they're not common as murder motives. Right? We've alleged in the criminal complaint that this was murder done for financial gain, specifically we anticipate the evidence will show that the defendant would forcibly and violently take personal identifying information of his victims and use that for financial purposes. Thank you for that last question, Tony. Okay, we're going to wrap it. Um, if you have follow-up questions, you can reach out to the PIO cadres from either the sheriff's office or the DA's office. I'm happy to deal with your inquiries. Thank you very much.